Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Cultist Simulator. So this is one of my favorite games. We've played it in fits and starts on the channel over the years, I suppose. And uh, I noticed that a lot of people are sort of checking it out on my channel because the it seems that it's on special at the moment for the next uh, almost two days. I think it's just shy of 48 hours when I record this and it should be going up fairly soon. So, uh, if anything, this stands to let you know that if you're interested in this game, it's going uh, almost, I think, depending on the packages, you know, like a, a third off to half price uh, across all the DLC. Um, go and check it out. But of course, this is also to the people that maybe are curious about the game because it's on special and they're having a bit of a sniff around. So I thought we'd play a little bit to show it off. Uh, the last series that I was doing for a bit there until it petered out was um, The Exile, which is the newest DLCs, and you can see the DLCs are all up here. And that was a radically different sort of chase across Europe as you're being pursued by a sort of criminal organization that you'd stolen from. It was fantastic and radically different to the base game. So it's always good to have DLC that adds, like the DLC, like the dancer and the priest and all that add different sort of origins, but the Exile actually really radically changed the game entirely. Um, what we're going to do, given that that was the last playthrough that's sort of fresher on the channel, we're just going to go back to the base standard. I've already purged my sa save, and we're going to just begin from scratch and show this off. Um, this, like I said, don't let this game uh, scare you off because of the way that it looks. Uh, it's definitely unusual, this ca card table thing, and it ends up filled with cards. But the storytelling in this is fantastic and if you're a cthulhu type fan and you like the occult you're gonna you're gonna really dig this so you can name your dude you can call him like half nut as we are want to do right now through the course of this there's a very good chance that you're gonna die um as this well we'll see the story You'll, it'll unfold as we go but um you could potentially come in as say like one of the roles as a police investigator. You sort of restart the roguelike, if you will. It's a roguelike that can take hours per run. And as that investigator, you would be investigating the case of Half Nut the Aspirant. So it actually has a sort of um, a linear, not a linearity, um, I suppose a canon consistency across your different characters from your different playthroughs, which I think is so clever. Anyway, the basic mechanic of it is you get these cards, you can click on them and you can get a bit of an explanation. And then you've got these little symbols down here, which can give you an idea of their aspect. It's all a little bit vague, but in recent years, they've tightened it up. So it's a lot um, easier to understand and intuit a lot of this stuff. But, um, but you can see there that this is a job. This card represents the job that you have. And this over here is like an action, which represents work, right? Earn a living or practice the invisible arts. So it could be going to the job. It could be... I don't know, working on your bloody cult, because ultimately you are trying to make a cult. But it is work in, in the many senses of the word. So basically, you take your menial employment, a precarious position as a hospital porter. Miserable, but it's all that you can find just now. We're going to go stick that in the bloody hole, as we uh, love to do. Another shift, mopping and dark, mopping the darkened hallways, delivering posts... Wait, delivering posts to hollow-eyed invalids... Trundling corpse laden gurneys to the basement. Basically, you're just a nurse. Or an orderly, sorry. I don't don't mean to disparage. Okay. Now, you can zoom in if you are if you find it's a bit squinty. I'll do the best I can with the fact that it's, um... You know, it's, this is going up on YouTube. You've got to try and work on that watchability. All right, another shift to the hospital. Halfway through your shift, um, the head porter beckons you aside. We won't be uh, requiring your services any longer, he says. Here, your last payment. We've paid through the end of the month. I've lost my job. At least now I have a little time to rest. My health improves. So we've unlocked dreams. And these are the cards that we've got. We've got funds and we've got health. And these are sort of core resource cards that you have there. You can also get um, these ones here, which are sort of... Uh, what are they called again? I think it's perception and... One, one's reason. And the other one is like imagination, I suppose. Um, okay, cool. So dreams is unlocking. Recall my dreams. Once again, I dream of a glow beneath the filthy skin of the world. The light through the black wood, the pale door, the old man. So we'll let that unlock. In the meantime, we could work. You can click on this and it will actually glow the cards that you can put in. So it's not like we can't use money to work. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't like that. But we can put our health to work. 
in unskilled labor, which, you know, if you think about it, that's not a, such a jump working with our, with our health. Uh, backbreaking work for meager pay. Is this the best that I can do? So we're just going to start that, send it away. We're going to unpause. You can put it on fast forward and you can space bar to pause. So we're just going to let that sort of tick over. And I'm not really sure what this thing is. It's like a card holder or something. If you want to drag a stack, you drag by the number. All right, let's pause. So dreams, recall my dreams. It began when I spoke to the old man in the hospital. He knew my name, but he's dead now. The pneumonia. Uh, why do I dream of him still? What is the cobalt light in my dreams? So we've gotten contentment and passion. Passion is the other sort of core resource like health. Sort of, um, I don't know, the, the cornerstones of your character, right, in a way, and what makes you up. And contentment, I'm happy, I think. So you can use this to, this is good, this didn't exist in launch. Contentment defends against dread, but contentment doesn't last. It gives you a bit more of a hint how you can employ this against dread to cancel it out. You can see it's got a timer on it, so we'll collect them. And if you unpause, you'll see that this will start ticking down. So it does actually exhaust after time. So we'll just stick contentment over there and we'll put passion in with funds. And then we've got dreams. So we could dream of passion and we can dream of funds. Now, because I've played this enough, I can sort of remember. Dreaming with funds essentially prompts your guy to go buy some opium to get some better sleep, right? So that's, you're putting money towards your dreams, right? But if we put passion towards our dreams, we can sort of dig deeper into your subconscious, I guess, is the best way I can sort of interpret it. I know this dream, a road crests a hilltop, and the air is silver bright. Usually, now, when this happens, when you get these sort of like decals and that large sting, that indicates you've sort of crossed a bit of a milestone in the story. Um, so usually when this happens, that's a good indication. Uh, the moonlit road. I know this dream. A road crests a hilltop and the air is silver bright. So you can see this is running and it's going to run for 60 seconds. I can unpause it and you can see. But it's also prompting us to put a law card in there. Now we don't have one. You can see over here, it's suggesting a way, which is a type of card. It's dream related. I know this is a lot to take in, but I'm sort of, I am going a little bit faster. And uh, what's this? An aspect of law, right? Essentially, it's saying these are the sort of cards you can put in, but at this point in time, we don't have them. And they would augment or enhance this thing and essentially got 60 seconds to do that. We can't, so we're just gonna sort of take the base result and you can see the little square here indicates that you can slot, which times perfectly. So this thing here is your doom timer in this game, right? Time passes. Time, the sundial's shadow passes. I must have funds to live or I will become ill. So it's probably safe to assume this is paying rent, paying for food, medicine, that sort of stuff. This is just the cost of living. Um, and the magnet little thing indicates that it's going to draw my money out. So you get 60 seconds. Now, if you don't have any money, you do in fact become ill. And then that creates another timer. And if you don't cure the illness, you can lose health or you can even die. And in fact, that's a pretty common way to die in this game is because you run out of money and you're bloody starved to death. So you gotta be always conscious of that. It's worth keeping money in the kitty just in case. So what's happened here? Unskilled labor. The day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So we've got our funds there, all right? We can just drag that out. We've got our health card back, but it's fatigued. It's kind of flipped or tapped sort of like mana in, um, what would you call it? Bloody uh, like magic or something like that. See, after 60 seconds, it will go back to being usable, but you can see we've got zero and one in brackets indicating that we can't use it. And vitality, exercise or something rarer has invigorated me, right? You can use vitality to improve your uh, abilities and you only get it for three minutes. So it's got a bit of a longer tail than contentment, but this is sort of a temporary um, well, inspiration, I suppose, or invigoration on the back of a health card. And this is ultimately how you ex you use these to level up and get more health. But we'll get to that shortly, I guess. Work. There's nothing we can do at the moment. We just don't have the cards and we can't. I mean, unless we can put vitality into our dream, which we can't. So that's fine. We'll just let time pass. God, I love this game. Any excuse to show people this game and signal boost it? Because that's what I do on this channel. I like taking games people don't know about and putting them in the public consciousness. So 
Our, um, our contentment ticked over and disappeared. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. So we'll just let these go. You can jump in for these quick little little interims there. The crowds of sleep. Rumpled fields, the wink of a river, a tingling chill. So essentially it's moving forward with this version of the dream that we didn't augment. Down I go into her salt's nightmare. Now, look at this, passing of time, it's taken more money as well, again. Um, work, no, 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 what am I doing? We're doing this. A bequest arrives. Oh, very good. The old man has bequeathed me a sum of money and a packet of peculiar papers, poetry, riddles, metaphysical speculations. For the first time in months, here is some fuel for my reason, right? So we've unlocked a whole bunch of funds through this sort of estate that's been left to us mysteriously. There's the actual bequest as well that we can investigate. And now we've unlocked reason, which is sort of our last type of card. Oh, no, 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 we haven't got... Yeah, we have. We've got uh, reason and uh, this. Passion. Passion. Right. Um, let's just put the funds over there. We'll put, we'll put them together sort of thing. We'll put this over here. Sort of just separate it all out. Now work, can we do anything here? Well, our health has ticked over, but we could also work with reason. But we've unlocked study. So we could study, we could study vitality. And see, you need a second vitality. So if we manage to get two vitalities, we'll be able to get another health, right? Study with reason. Now, I think if you do this, this generates more of these sort of little bonuses. So if you were to study health, long walks kill cobwebs, I believe you'll unlock more vitality. I'm not 100% sure. It makes sense to, to study the bequest straight away. But uh, you know what? I'll actually study the health. Let's, let's find out. Let's find out together. So that's going to take 60 seconds. Now, as far as work, we can work with reason, which is to say we find clerical work. Find work which will spare my body, if not my mind. And there you go. We made a little bit of progress there. That was quick here. Oh, here's our dream. I remember that her salt wrote of this. I've leveled, levered up floorboards and wriggled down snugly. Now I am compressed beneath them like a hidden corpse. The air stinks of hot dust. My mouth is full of splinters. This time, I haven't learned what I hope to learn, whatever that was. So this is essentially like, I guess, a fail state of the dream. There's a dice roll in the background. We didn't remember we didn't augment it with any sort of passion or, or lore or anything like that. So we've exhausted our passion and we've accumulated a dread, which is exactly what we were talking about before. I've seen too much. A nameless gnawing fear has its teeth in my hopes, an existential horror. So if you leave this unchecked for the three minute timer, you can, you can, it, it'll basically morph into worse things, right? So, what can we do here? We can dream. Uh, we can dream of dread. Really? Remind us. Dread can be quelled by the correct source. So this is where we would put um, contentment, which is what we had before, right? Now, what we can do, because I, I personally know this from my trial and error, is if we're going to get some contincture of uh, opium. Actually, it tells you there. This is an expensive and risky way to gain contentment. It may provoke sickness or despair. But we're going to give it a go anyway. So we're going we're gonna to bash some opium and have a sleep, and that should cure our dread. Meanwhile, clerical work. Glover and Glover have offered me a junior position. I start at 8 sharp tomorrow morning. So we get our reason back, and now we have this job card to work at Glover and Glove, but it has a timer on it. And that essentially um, represents if you were to neglect your position. So this is like not rocking up to work or whatever, right? So there could be repercussions to that. Um, as far as work goes, I guess you could put reason there, but you can't, you can't do anything there. So that's, uh, I suppose the best way to describe that as I understand it is if we were to lose this job whole cloth, you could then try and find it again with reason. Anyway, we'll go to the job. The scratching of pins, the sourness of dust, the, sigh the sighing sorry, of the younger Glover, 
and the greedy gurgling of the elder. So we're going to work away there, but we could apply reason for diligence. So we could work a bit harder, sort of show up. I will apply extra effort. Perhaps they'll appreciate it. Perhaps. So let's let that go. And we'll wait for everything else to tick over. There you go, we've got our tincture of opium, we've got our contentment. Oh, that deep peace, but I should not do this again. So I suppose, I don't actually do that very often, I'm more doing it for the sake of the video. But um, I suppose if you abuse it, you could find yourself in trouble. Oh, well, hang on, here we go. The price of joy. My breathing has been labored, my thoughts confused. Perhaps I should not have indulged so freely in that cure of the pain. So, I'd be curious, This I think this is a dice roll on whether I get sick from that. So that's interesting. Anyway, so dreams, what we're going to do is put dread in and we're going to use contentment to clear my mind so we can cancel out the dread so it doesn't actually sort of morph into something worse. Now here we go. This is interesting. This is this is potentially death. I've become unwell. Um, if an illness cannot consume health, it will kill you unless you have special protection. So it would magnet up a health card similar to money. We might be in a spot of problem, uh, bother here. So they're taking my money there. That's fine. What's this? Bleak thoughts. Now, this is actually why you don't want dread because you're having a d bad day and it would prey on dread. But we don't actually have any negative cards for that to vacuum up. So that's good. Oh, this. Oh, there we go. It drew out my health from there. So this this is the study that we did. You can see that there's one card missing and that's because it immediately magneted my health card into there. So we're going to be all right. We're not going to die. I wonder if I think it turns that health card into sickness. Oh, this is a shaky start, which is pretty cool. Anyway, so this all the more reason to study the vitality. So if we put two vitality together, I am a brim with vitality. If I devote some time to exercise, I'll benefit. And this is how you get more health cards. And you can't do it infinitely. It won't work with two vitality each time. It, it, the requirements stack. So the game thought about that <laughs> to stop you exploiting it. A promotion. Here we go. Mr. Alden, the supervisor of records, has called me into his office to recognize my diligence. Not bad for one day's work. I watch the mole on his neck as he talks and talks and talks, but at the end of it, I have a promotion. My new position is better paid, and the desk stands by the street window. But I work directly for Mr. Alden now. Mr. Alden is known to be exacting. Okay, so we got some funds, a position at Glover and Glover, position in records under Mr. Alden. I earn a little more. I stay a little later. Mr. Elden always watches me closely. If you don't attend this job regularly, you might suffer a demotion. So the time is probably longer on that, but we might earn a little bit more. So where are we at here? Work. We could work for passion, which is to say we would paint, I believe. But you know what? We got that promotion. Let's lean into it. Let's put that back in. I'm better paid than I was, but Mr. Elden has taken an interest in me. Mr. Elden is very particular. Mr. Elden likes things done just so. And Mr. Elden has never believed that I am qualified for this position. Oh my. Let's not piss Mr. Elden off, shall we? Okay. Clear my mind. The sun still moves. The wind still walks. My journals are the labyrinth clue. Uh, so... We have a fleeting reminiscence, which is a two minute timer. Essentially, you could put this to work for like the moth. We, we haven't gotten into any of this yet, but there is sort of a dungeon running component to this game where you build up your crew and you go into what's called vaults and they have uh, a whole bunch of um, steps that you have to overcome. And generally speaking, it's by accruing a bunch of different aspects. You have a lantern, moth, frost, all sorts of different cool ones. But this, you would basically put this to that. This is just a temporary sort of buff. Um, that is fleeting, funnily enough. So we could dream. 
We could get some more opium. We saw how that went for us last time. We could dream of passion of the moonlit road. We did this before. Let's do it again and see what happens. We don't have a law again, and that's fine, but I'm curious how the if the outcome will be the same or different. And there we go, we've got an affliction. And essentially this is just your flipped health card. This illness has damaged my health. I'll need to rest before I am fully recovered. Cure your afflictions with funds or vitality. There's a timer with it as well. So after the three minutes, I believe it will delete the card. But if we can fix it in the meantime, we can flip it. I don't suppose we can use that on our dream. We probably could have dreamt of it, like as in rest, bed rest sort of thing. There goes our money up there. So basically every 60 seconds we have to pay a dollar, which is frightful because even though we've got a good cash, we're not really earning anything yet. There we go, the clouds part. The wolves, uh, the wolf despair prowls elsewhere. No dread empowers this despair and it's over for now. So we've got yet another fleeting reminiscence. Not that helpful right now. There we go, trembling in the air. Fascination may provoke visions. Again, this is sort of the meandering mind looking for little, what would you say? Little threads of insecurities or tangents to grab onto to potentially turn a wandering thought into something darker. That's probably the best way I could describe it with my good uh, English. Um, exercise the body. Uh, I've grown stronger. I've gained health, but it'll be more difficult to gain health next time. So there we go. We've gotten an extra health card, basically. Um, so we'll collect that up. Health goes there. We'll put this down here because it's sort of associated with it, but this is skill, a stronger physique. I've benefited from exercise. This is as much a, uh, this is almost a gatekeeper from us doing what we did again, I believe. Um, okay, so study. So if I were to study the skill, stronger physique, a lesson learnt. So I believe that would be vitality. There you go, vitality. Yeah, 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 so I think, well, that's cool. So we'd be able to do two vitality again by the look of it. Um, I'd be curious. We could probably study that up again to get another health, but this skill's not going anywhere at the moment. It's not, it's not fading like the vitality was. So this is probably a good chance to, um, oh, you could study the fleeting reminiscence. It might be possible with the right combination of influences to raise more power. With and knowledge. Ah, look, we're, we're drawing blanks there, so not right now. But let's pop open the bequest. Unlock books and other treasures, and we have to choose an approach. I think we can use reason or passion. We've got four seconds on reason, so I'm just going to let the thing flip. There we go. I'll examine each item with meticulous care. So let's pop that open. Now what's happened here? Work overtime at Mr. Elden's insistence. I do not believe that you have properly understood the importance of our work here. This task requires your full attention. Add reason to satisfy Mr. Elden. Unfortunately, we just don't have it, so there's not much we can do. But, uh, you know, we've got more important things than just keeping the boss happy right now. So here we go. I would like to say that I am disappointed, but my expectations of you were already low. I have no choice but to withhold a portion of your pay. You may go, but be punctual tomorrow. There may be ways to deal with Mr. Olden. I'm not familiar with him. I haven't figured it out. So he's withholding pay. 60 seconds on that. We got a bit of money. Now we've opened the bequest. My correspondent describes my dreams exactly. They use names that are instantly familiar. The house, the wood, the hours, the glory. Uh, they We know the wood. That mentioned that in our dreams from the way. They knew secrets beneath time and the skin of the world. A new curiosity burns in me. So this is sort of your origin point. There is a note here. Directions to a bookshop that does not advertise its wares. So we can see we've got the directions to Morlands. Temptation Enlightenment, which might get snatched up by that. Note on a possible collaborator and a watchman's secret. So this is a law card and you're going to see a lot of these. It's Lantern, 
um, is the aspect you saw before two lantern and these reminiscence had two moth to give you an idea but this this particular card that that look with the circle and the and the actual aspect in the center is a pretty big core part of this game it's a, it's a fragment of lore okay so let's just neaten all this up let's pull this out of the way put these down here a watchman's secret that's lore let's stick that over there okay so work what can we do here working on the temptation i don't believe actually does anything Nah, not really i think it allows you to change i don't know you go file and fulfillment of desire often a conclusion so that's sort of how you trigger an end game which i haven't gotten to um so at the moment it doesn't really do much for us so we could work with health and we could work with reason um i think we'll just go back to our job because we need to keep earning the the dollars and study now study we have many things to study here health fleeting well i wonder if we can the fleeting reminiscence can we apply no we can't apply uh the the law um now to study a watchman's secret i think is similar to studying health if i had two watchman secrets i could put them together into a and into a higher form of secret into a better card basically so for the moment that can just wait um we could study up on health but we've got this note on collaborator and directions to Morlin. let's talk to this collaborator i have a name a description a few tantalizing details but there are a thousand thousand faces in this city so we're gonna go look into this dude Tonight I will dream of a museum. Dream of curios behind glass. So, oh, we did actually apply passion to this. No, no, it's a passion dream. We didn't have law, so it actually is going down a different path this time. And money comes in. We get another reminiscence. That's unusual getting all of these. The wrong kind of attention. The city is rife with journalists and detectives and other, other meddlers. How long will they leave me in peace? So this... If we had notoriety, sort of like dread, I guess, um, or, or reasons for people to sniff about, but notoriety is the main one, um, then you can potentially have things like a police investigator on your case causing you trouble because you're just causing, because you're drawing attention. But I think we're all right for the moment. We're still a bit of a small fish. Dreams of curios behind class. In the display case of the Impossible Museum, I always see an apple, white as snow and hard as marble. Remember, this is in the dreamscape sort of thing. That's why it's all a bit weird. A golden beetle in a stern box, a coy geometry awaiting my touch, a black envelope uh, bursting with spring, a brass opera box for instruments of record and measure, uh, a storm in a tin. I always wake before I see the aisles end. What an interesting dream. But we got a glimmering from it. Now, glimmering is to passion what, uh, was it vitality is to health? So this is a temporary boost that we can study, potentially, to get even more. Let's push that out of the way. Dreams. Here we go. Let's see if we can clear this affliction. So we can dream, we can use medicine or vitality. Now, we don't have vitality. We've only got health. So we'll just put a dollar toward it the medicine is dark and bitter as tar it would be easy to suspect i am being poisoned so we'll do that and that should clear our sickness i'm safe for now the meddler's attention must be elsewhere and that is a relief but that that was kind of expected uh find a potential collaborator and now i have an address i'll dispatch a letter and propose a meeting and now we've unlocked talk now mystique is the other thing with notoriety that draws attention. So luckily we just got this card now after that police investigator pissed off. Study. I suppose we should study the direction to Morland's. The direction to Morland's shop are cryptic. When one deals in this kind of books my correspondent studied, one must be circumspect. 
So essentially, these are two main avenues that are opening up to us now. One would be talking to and recruiting other people into your cult, into your organization as followers. And then Moreland's Bookshop is the start of sort of a location system, especially at Moreland's, you can spend money to deep dive into there and find random books and lore and potentially languages. So you might find a really important book that could give you a whole bunch of this sort of lore. But you can't read it because it's in Latin, so then you need to get a Latin book to learn how to translate it. So the system is much deeper than what we've been able to show off in this first little half hour. This is nothing. But um, but yeah, it uh, it really goes places. It's really interesting. I haven't any idea where it ends or how to potentially clock it because I just haven't had the chance to put enough time into it. But even from the time that I have sunk into it, which has been a lot, I've gotten value and I've had a bloody blast. But anyway, like I said, it's kind of, it's on special at the moment on Steam for the next uh, two days, basically. So I'll chuck this video up nice and quick and uh, and sort of signal boost it, because that's what I live for. Let me know if you find this interesting. It's definitely unusual. It's very cool though, I really enjoy it, and it's got some great thematic world building. I know, you know, our channel's starting to grow at a pretty fast rate, so there might be some of you, this is old hat, you remember seeing this before. Some of you might have no idea. I'd be curious to hear what you think. If you did enjoy it, either way, whether you want to get it yourself, I'm happy to play more on the channel if it's well received and we can turn this into a bit of a playthrough. Otherwise, team, we might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.